Today I got the Model B from Dynamic Scooters. This is the smallest and lightest scooter I've had the opportunity to review. In fact, it's so small it can almost fit inside my backpack. Now don't let the size fool you, this isn't a kid's scooter. Dynamic has rated this to fit a rider 3.9 up to 6.5. I think they got a little crazy on the high end of that rating, which I'll talk about later. But for the size and price of $450, it performed much better than I was expecting. I'll get into that later as well. Now for that price, this is going up against brands like Segway, GoTrax, and Highboy, which are all powerhouse house brands for entry-level scooters. And if this were judged primarily on performance, you know, speed, acceleration, hill climbing, brakes, all that stuff, it would probably come out near the bottom. But when it comes to lightweight, portability, and storage, this is as good as it gets. Now for me living in Utah where there's a lot of space, you know, people aren't stacked upon people. This really isn't something that I would be interested in because it only has a top speed of 15 miles per hour on the highest of the three speed modes. Out here going that slow, it's gonna take you a while to get anywhere. And it's only got a range rating of 12 miles. I did a range test and got eight miles, which was actually pretty good for my 190 pound frame. I was only expecting around three to four, but even if I were able to get 12 miles, that's still too short to really go anywhere. By the time I get to the trail from my house, the battery's pretty much a quarter gone. But in a city where everything you need, including work, is within a few miles, this is the route I'd go. So let me paint you a picture to explain why. So let's say you're living in New York, and unless you're filthy rich, your apartment is going to be pretty small. You're going to need something that you can tuck underneath the table or in the corner. Now the next morning after a full recharge, which only takes four to five hours, you're ready to head four miles uptown for work. And you realize the taxis are too much, Ubers are kind of smelly, and you woke up too late to take the subway. So that's when you grab the scooter that just takes a few seconds to unfold. With the busy streets of New York, you're glad you don't have a big and bulky frame. Something that can slip in and out of crowded areas fairly easy. And something that's easy to manage to quickly get off, lift over a hole, or up onto the sidewalk. Once you arrive at work, you quickly fold the scooter, throw it in your backpack, and head into work. And while you're walking into the building and waiting for the elevator, and then stopping by your buddy's cubicle to ask how the game was last night. Hey, how was the game? It was amazing. You can't help but realize that you haven't really minded the 22 pound scooter that's been hanging on your shoulder for the last 10 minutes. Now once you get to your desk, you notice that the battery is pretty much halfway drained and you decide to charge it up. In order to keep the workspace nice and tidy, you decide to remove the battery and use the power outlets behind your computer to charge it up on your desk. As you watch it charging, you think to yourself, it'd be nice to go on a longer ride in Central Park someday. And since the battery only weighs a couple of pounds, you decide to pick up another one for $100. All right, so the end of the day comes. You grab the scooter, hit the road, and head home. And while on the way home, you appreciate the poppy acceleration. You then remember your old scooter for about the same price that had a very slow start. Now there is one thing that you missed about your old scooter, and that is the better braking. This new one, even though it has its own regen brake lever and a pedal brake, was just not as powerful as your other one. Now just before you get home, one of your neighbors joins you for the last part of the ride. She looks down and notices the tiny tires. You tell her at first they made you a little bit nervous, but then you learn to lean back, pop up the tire and get low when hitting cracks and curves. And that is the end of my analogy, my story. Hopefully you enjoyed it. But let me tell you a few more things that I liked and didn't like about the scooter. And starting off with the bad, as you can see, the tires are solid, which does produce a lot of vibration, especially on sidewalks. The good news is that this is a prototype. The final version will have honeycomb tires, so it will help with those smaller vibrations. Another thing I didn't like was the slight flex in the deck where it folds. I just wish that was a little bit more solid. The posture also isn't the best for my height. I'm 5'11". Standing straight up and extending my arms out, I could reach the grips, but just to where I could just curl about two or three inches around the grip. The good news is that they are going to increase the height of that stem by about four inches. Well, to end, let me tell you the good stuff. The first is the hill climbing ability. This took my 190 pound frame up a 10% grade. Chugga, chugga, choo, choo, chugga, chugga, choo, choo, choo. I was very impressed with how well it climbed. I was not expecting that. The balance was also good something I wasn't expecting either. So if you need to take your hand off to quickly eat your face, it's stable enough to do that. I also like the long and low deck. There was plenty enough room for my 10 and a half size shoes when I oriented them at about a 45 degree angle, which is how I typically stand. And it's about the same distance off the ground as non-electric scooters. So if the battery dies, it's not that bad to kick. The last thing I liked was the strip headlight down the stem. I thought that was a nice touch and just a cool and unique design.
Now, if you want to pick this up and support the channel at the same time, I've got the link below. As always, thanks for watching and take care.